All right. I'm going to read chapter 11 and 12 of Saving the Team. We met at Emma's house before the dance to get ready. When I got there, Emma and Zoe were already crowded into her bathroom, playing around with some makeup. Whoa, you look great, I said to Emma. She was out of her usual uniform of shapeless hoodies and shorts and had on a light blue sleeveless dress with white polka dots and a white patent leather belt around her waist. Her hair was tied up into its usual bun, but she had added tiny silk flowers for decoration. Zoe helped me pick out the dress, Emma said. Zoe was on her tippy toes, looking into the mirror and fussing with the front of her hair. She had on a slim dress with a Peter Pan collar and her legs were wrapped in dark floral tights. As always, she looked like she had just stepped out of a magazine. So waved at me from her reflection as she perfected her bangs. My mom is demanding that we take pictures before we leave, Emma continued. Awesome, I said. I need a cute picture of the four of us. Here, let me do your makeup, Zoe said, pulling me in front of the mirror. Lip gloss, mascara, and eyeshadow were littered all around the countertop. It looked like she had borrowed everything she could get her hands on from her older sisters. She put mascara on my eyelashes, a tiny bit of peach blush on my cheeks, and topped it all off with some sparkly light pink lip gloss. I gazed at myself in the mirror, unused to seeing myself with makeup on. It looks so natural, I said. Jessie showed up after we had gotten ready, just in time for pictures. She had on a silver sequin top and black pants, and her hair was pulled to one side. Fashionably late as usual, Jessie. Emma teased. Jessie looked glum. My mom almost didn't let me come. My math teacher gave her a call this afternoon. She shook her head, but let's forget about that. You guys look fantastic. So do you, I said. And we gathered in front of Emma's fireplace for photos. My soccer pals sure did clean up nice. After Emma's brother dropped us off at school, we headed inside to the gymnasium. The place had been given a complete makeover. A giant banner with the words Neon Knights scrawled across welcomed us as we walked in. Festive bunches of balloons were scattered around the edge of the room and the walls were draped with glow-in-the-dark posters. Black spotlights made the white and neon colors glow and to add to the effect, everyone was wearing flashing necklaces and bracelets. Oh, look, said Jesse, they're giving those away. Jessie th strode confidently toward the far wall where a bunch of boys were jumping up and down to the pounding music. The three of us followed. After we got some glowing plastic jewelry, we headed to the snack table and munched cookies and sipped juice. We watched the dance floor where groups of boys and girls gathered completely separated. Every once in a while, one of the boys would hurl himself into a circle of girls before laughing and rushing out again. His friends would cheer, cheer for him and slap his back enthusiastically when he rejoined them. The music was getting really good and Emma, Jesse, and I just had to dance. A bunch of the kangaroos joined us on the dance floor. Brianna, Sarah, and Anna, even two of the eighth graders, Grace and, and Anaja, danced with us for a little while. They both seemed really nice. It was a shame that Maribel seemed determined to keep the team separated by grades but at least we were getting a chance to hang out now. At first, Zoe wouldn't move, even though we dragged her onto the floor and bumped hips with her. But our enthusiasm was contagious and we eventually wore her down. She started bobbing around a little bit. Many songs later, my hair was stuck to my forehead in, a, in sweaty clumps. But then suddenly the music changed, going from an upbeat dance music to a slow song. Everyone froze. Someone tapped me on the shoulder, startling me. It was Stephen. He was going to ask me, was he going to ask me to dance? Hey, um, my friend Matt wants to know if Zoe will dance with him, he said. Can you ask? Uh, I guess not. I walked over to Zoe, who had been watching the whole exchange. Before I could even ask her, she shook her head. You don't want to dance with Matt, I asked. No, thanks, Zoe said. I have to go to the bathroom. Sorry, I said to Stephen, not really needing to translate. I guess she doesn't want to. Emma stepped in. Hey, Stephen, I'll dance with Matt. Leave it to Emma to know what to do. And Devin will dance with you. Wait, what? I threw a dirty look at Emma. You will? Stephen stammered, his eyebrows shooting up in surprise. I could have killed Emma. 
Sucking it up, I smiled at Stephen and said, sure. The three of us walked out into the dance floor where Matt materialized. Stephen put his arm around my waist and I draped my loose arms loosely over his shoulders. It was incredibly awkward. I hardly knew Stephen. Luckily, I spotted Jesse who appeared dancing next to us with Cody. Had Jesse and Cody, had Jesse asked to Cody to dance? Wondering about that proved a good distraction because it gave me a break from thinking about if my palms were sweaty or if my breath smelled. She gave me a thumbs up and then mouthed something I couldn't make out. I gave her a quizzical look and she mouthed the words again. He asked me. Cody had asked Jesse to dance. I gave her a big smile and a wink. When the song was over, Emma came rushing over and cut between me and Stephen. Matt told me there's a photo booth. We got to go. I gave Stephen a small smile and he waved as he walked off. I looked over to Jesse, who kept dancing with Cody as a new song began to play. Jesse, we're going out into the hall, I called to her. Come take pictures with us. Jesse excused herself from Cody and followed Emma and me. We grabbed Zoe, grabbed Zoe on our way to the hallway where a real old fashioned photo booth had been set up. Ahead of us in line were a group of eighth graders hogging the booth. Maribel was there and so were a couple of the cool eighth graders from my algebra class. The whole group kept taking photos and cutting right back in for more. Hello, people, we are waiting, Emma said. We're missing the dance, waiting for them to finish up. Winners can take as many photos as we want. I recognized Trey Bishop, the eighth grade captain of the boys soccer team from the pep rally. He poked a finger at us, you losers have to wait. A couple of the eighth graders started to crack up. So what, you're good at soccer, big whoop. Emma wasn't intimidated at all. Get back in line, she shot back. You guys shouldn't even be called kangaroos. You're total embarrassment to the school, Trey said. Well, at least we don't have to make fun of other people to feel good about ourselves, I said angrily. If I could stand up to Maribel, I could certainly tell this bully off. Everyone behind us was gathering around to see what was going on. At least we don't score on our own team. Huge laughter, much louder this time. I noticed Maribel was laughing too. I felt my blood start to boil. I guess seeing Maribel laughing at Zoe over the edge too, she pushed her way to the stand next to Emma. Stop being jerks, she yelled. That did it. That finally shut everybody up. But then the boys just started laughing harder. Maribel didn't even try to hide her laughter. Some captain she was. Stepping aside, Trey swept his arm out and motioned for us to use the photo booth. Go right ahead, he said, still laughing. Take some pictures. Just give me a copy so I can show everyone what losers look like. As they walked away from the booth, they sing song, losers, losers, losers. Maribel followed them back into the gymnasium, laughing all the way. Traitor. Our good mood was entirely ruined. We didn't even feel like taking photos after that. It felt like the kangaroos had lost again this time off the field. And, if, and as if Maribel had ever been a true teammate, she was now acting like an outright enemy. That was no way for a team captain to act. I felt my eyes narrow. As a co-captain, it was up to me to do something. Maribel and I were going to have a little chat at practice on Monday. And this time I was looking forward to it. Chapter 12. That Sunday, I told Cara over the phone all about what had happened at the dance. I can't believe she just walked away and didn't even stick up for you guys, Cara said. Well, maybe after everything you've told me about her, I can believe it. And her being a co-captain, that's just horrible. The team can't keep going on like this. If Maribel can't be a good leader, I guess it's up to me, I said. You can do it, Devin, Cara said. The Cosmos, you know what it's like. We have a lot of team events and the captains organize them. That's part of our job. Last week, it was a frozen yogurt social. Another time we had a Saturday pizza party. How do you guys do team bonding? Well, that was easy to answer. We didn't. Cara had some good ideas. So far, the kicks had only had lame practices and games that we couldn't win. We should totally do something as a team. But there was just one thing. I'm not sure Maribel would go for it, especially after what she did at the dance. Cara's voice got stern and firm. 
If she's awful to you, you can always talk to your coach. Mirabelle has to be stopped. Maybe she shouldn't be co-captain anymore. I shuddered. I'd stood up to Mirabelle once, but thinking of telling her she shouldn't be captain anymore sent a chill up my spine. Speaking to Kara, however, gave me courage. You're right, I said. I'll talk to coach and if I'll talk to coach if Maribel won't help, but I'm not sure if coach will listen. Even though she's used to being serious about soccer in college, she treats us like we're kindergartners. We don't get the chance to improve and work on our skills. That's so weird to me, said Kara. It was nice to get an outsider's perspective. It made me realize just how odd it actually was having such a coddling coach. Maybe if you told her how you felt. I'll tackle Maribel first, I said. Not literally, but maybe if she won't listen to reason, I'll have to resort to it. <laughs> Kara laughed. You can do it, Devin, she said encouragingly. My best friend was right. The kangaroos needed to bond as a team, and Maribel's laughing at us at the dance hadn't helped at all. She crossed the line. I was ready to have it out with her and bring the team together. All day Monday, I kept practicing on what I would say to Maribel that afternoon at practice. Resolved, I headed into the locker room after school to change, ready to face Maribel. I was surprised as to how empty and quiet it was, even though bags were strewn around and the locker doors were halfway opened. And then I noticed there was a commotion coming from the bathroom. What's going on? I called out, heading to the back. Opening the door, I found the whole team crowded inside. They stepped inside so I could see. There on the mirror, scrawled in lipstick, was a message for us. Bye, losers, it said, with a big flourishing M at the bottom. There was only one person who'd possibly done this. Maribel, she quit. I couldn't believe it. I'd been all ready to have it out with her, and she'd left the team? Not even, Emma said. She transferred. What? I asked in surprise. From behind me, Coach Flores says, to Pinewood. The faces of the girls around me dropped in shock. That is just perfect, Frida blurted out, laughing to herself. Pinewood. I don't even know what to call that. Irony? Poetic justice? A made-for-TV movie? Coach Flores grabbed some paper towels and started to furiously wipe Maribel's message off the mirror. It was the first time any of us had seen her angry. Don't let this, this message distur, uh, discourage you. You girls are not losers. No way. It doesn't matter if we win or lose our games, she said as she continued to scrub. Leave it to Maribel to use long-lasting lipstick. I'm sure Maribel had her personal reasons for leaving. They probably didn't have anything to do with the team. Well, did she tell you that, I asked? Well, I didn't talk to her directly coach admitted. I received an email from her dad. Well, did it say anything about how Maribel was transferring to go to a better team, I wondered? No, nothing like that, coach Flores stopped scrubbing on the mirror and turned around to face us. Her dad just thanked me for being her coach and said that Maribel had been accepted to Pinewood on scholarship. Pinewood's a very good school. It's got excellent academic and athletic programs. Jesse and I exchanged knowing glances. Aha, I said, so that's why she was so concerned about doing her best at the Pinewood game. She was up for a scholarship. And she knew they'd be watching her, Jesse said, and nodded in agreement. It all made sense now. Maribel's insistence on making the lineup, her saying she needed to win, well, good for her. She'd gotten what she wanted. And guess, and I guess that's why she laughed at us at the dance when the guys were calling us losers. <coughs> I said, because she figured she'd never have to see us again. Well, we will see her again. We're playing, we're playing Pinewood again in two weeks, Coach Flores said, frowning. Wait, what? Who was calling you losers? We all exchanged worried glances. The guys on the soccer team were total jerks, but we didn't want to rat them out. Nobody, I said quickly, it's fine. Coach raised her eyebrows, but I could tell she was going to let the matter drop, at least for now. Look, she said, I can see that nobody's in the mood to practice today. We can cancel. This is a lot to take in. I'll be in my office, and if anybody needs me or wants to talk, don't let, don't let this get you down, girls, 
She gave us a cheerful smile before heading to her office. The other girls walked back to their lockers to pack up, leaving me, Jesse, Emma, and Zoe alone. What did coach mean when she said we were playing Pinewood again in two weeks, I asked. There aren't enough teams in the league to fill the season, so we play some teams twice, Emma explained. I think they do it by lottery or something. And we ended up with Pinewood again? I'd call that losing the lottery, I said. Me too, Jesse agreed. Hey, since we're not practicing today, I'm going to go watch Cody practice, Jesse announced. I raised my eyebrows at her. You are? I asked. Maybe you should take the opportunity to catch up on homework instead. Jessie rolled her eyes. Don't worry about it, Mom, she said sarcastically. Cody invited me at the dance on Friday. He said I should come and watch him play sometime. Anyone else want to come? She gave me a sly smile. I bet Stephen will be there. Ew, after what his teammates said to us at the dance, Emma said, no way am I going to watch those jerks practice. Zoe and I are going shopping. Devin? I didn't feel like shopping, and I certain, certainly didn't want to see the boys' soccer team either, not after what they'd done. It's okay. You guys go. I knew what I had to do. It was way more important than shopping or helping Jessie drool over her crush. I had to get the kangaroos together as a team. I couldn't talk to Maribel like I had planned, but it was time to let Coach Flores know exactly what I was thinking. After the rest of the team left, I marched over to Coach Flores' office. She was sitting there tilted way back in her chair, looking at her computer screen. I knocked loudly on her door. Can I come in? Devin, Coach said, easing out of her seat. How are you doing? She motioned me in while opening a folding chair for me to sit on. Coach reached into a drawer and pulled out a half-empty package of Girl Scout cookies. She removed the cookie tray from the box and offered me some with her usual smile. I know this is hard, she said, having a teammate leave the, in the middle of the season like this. I nodded but didn't say anything. It was harder to speak my mind to Coach than I thought it would be. I'd rather face an angry Maribel. At least I didn't have to worry about hurting her feelings. What's bothering you, Devin, she asked. Maribel always complained to me about how bad we were and how we kept losing. I felt the words rush out of me. Don't you care that we are losers? You girls are not losers. Don't say that. You're still in middle school. Sports should be fun. Isn't that what I always say? Well, I'm not having fun, I said. I don't think anybody is. Is that true? Coach said. She looked surprised and genuinely concerned. I nodded. Our team isn't very... Uh, I searched for the right word, cohesive. My friend back home, Kara, she's co-captain of her soccer team, and she said they do a lot of team bonding stuff. After school and even on the weekends, why don't we do any of that, I asked her. I didn't know you girls wanted to, to do that kind of thing. I just never wanted to take up all your time with soccer and know you girls have lives outside of school. Trust me, I've been there before, Coach said wistfully. You played soccer, right? I asked Maribel told me that. I did play once, she said, reaching into her desk and pulling out a framed newspaper articles. The article was titled, These Girls Can Kick, Kenfield Kangaroo State Champions Two Years in a Row, and featured a large photo of a team of smiling girls wearing the blue and white Kentville uniform. Some of the girls were holding their pointer fingers up into the air in the number one sign. Two of the girls in the front row held a large gold trophy between them with 1992 state champions emblazoned on the front. Did you go to Kentville, I asked? Yes, she nodded. That's me. She pointed to one of the girls holding the trophy. I barely recognized her. She looked so young. I quickly scanned to the top of the article. Maria Luisa Flores led the Kentucky Kangaroos to their second state win. The kicks, as they are known, to their fans for the arsenal of kicks they use against their opponents on the field didn't disappoint. Just a little more than five minutes into the game, co-captain midfielder Flores landed a pass of 40 yards to midfielder Kerry Coles. What? I shook my belief, my head in disbelief. The kangaroos used to be good. In fact, they used to be great. State champions even? You were on the team when it got its nickname, I asked, still in shock. Jesse and Emma said nobody even remembers the name where the name the kicks came from. Our coach drilled us nonstop on kicks, push, incept, 
outside, toe, heel, you name it. Coach Floor said, we had a kick for every and any situation. And since we were the kangaroos, too, our fans started calling us the kicks. She got a faraway look in her eye. When I was your age, all I did was play soccer. Nothing else. My parents made me practice every day so I could get a college scholarship, which I did. She paused for emphasis, but I ended up hating it. Why? I asked. There was too much pressure, she said. All the fun had been taken out of it for me. It was all about winning, not about having a good time. Well, then why are you a soccer coach if you hate it? I asked. I loved the game. I just hated the pressure not being able to pursue other interests that I had, she said. I'm a soccer coach because I don't want kids to go through what I went through. All that yelling and screaming. Trust me, you don't want that. You're right, I said. That doesn't sound fun at all. But can't there be something in the middle, I suggested. Well, what do you mean, she said. We want to win, I replied immediately. Maribel thought we were losers. We had to prove her wrong. But Devin, she said, winning isn't everything. I know that, she said, but feeling like we don't have a shot at being any good is, that's worse. Can you help us at least try to get better? Coach Flora sat up straight in her chair, looking at me curiously. Does this have anything to do with what you said in the locker room about somebody calling you losers? It's part of it, I admitted. We want to do better as a team and we don't want to be the laughing stocks of the school. There's nothing fun about that. What's laughing stocks? Coach looked upset. Out with it, Devin. I need to know what's going on. I sighed. I knew she wasn't going to let it rest, so I quickly told her what had happened. For the record, I want to make it clear that Stephen and Cody had nothing to do with it. I said, they were both nice guys, and please don't go to Coach Valentine. The boys will just come after us even more, I pleaded. Coach had a pained look on her face. I had no idea, she said. Now, don't worry about the boys' team. I promise they won't bother you again. And if the girls' team really wants to try to win, I'll do my best. But I'm not going to force you girls to do anything. But what if we want you to tell us what to do, I said. We want your guidance. We need a leader. Maribel, she might have been a good player, but she wasn't a good leader. She was more of a bully than anything. Ah, coach sighed. I'm so sorry you felt that way, she said. I always got a funny vibe from that girl. Like maybe she wasn't, maybe she wasn't who she was pretending to be when she was talking to me. Coach had caught on more than I realized. Yeah, I said, she wasn't always very nice. That was an understatement. Coach shook her head. I'm sorry you had to deal with her as co-captain, she said. How can I help lead you girls? How can I give you what you need to have fun out there? I saw a sparkle in Coach's eyes I'd never seen before. At the very least, I'd gotten her thinking a little differently. I talked to her about my idea for team bonding events and for some drills we could run. Coach began to get excited and began to come up with a lot of great ideas. She knew a ton about formations, and she had done a lot of different kinds of drills in her heyday. By the time our practice would have been over, my dad was outside waiting to pick me up. We both felt energized and excited about the possibilities. Thanks for coming in and talking to me, Devin, she said. I know it must have been hard for you, but I had no idea any of you were feeling like this or that the team was being teased. I'll make sure to let you all know that we have an open dialogue here. I just want you girls to be happy. And I mistakenly thought that what I would have wanted at your age is what you girls wanted too. I'm sorry about that. Coach Flores was super nice. If she could put her ideas into action and start leading the team, she could be the best coach ever. It's okay, I told her. I'm just excited for our next practice now. Coach smiled. You know what? So am I. See you tomorrow, she said. You got it, coach. I raced out of her office, feeling like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. No more Maribel. And coach was open to all of my ideas. I felt like singing as I climbed into the car. Wow, dad remarked as he looked at my face. You're all smiles. I felt my grin widen. I have a feeling that kangaroos have just turned over a new leaf. That is the end of chapter 12. Thank you for joining me.